Hey, hey, peace, family. We should be live right now. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Let me make sure I got my mic hooked up. Yes, I do. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Let me make sure y'all can hear me before I introduce the guest, the amazing guest we have today. Tell me if you can hear me, family. Today's show is too important to miss anything, so I want to make sure y'all hear me. Uh, let me make sure they can hear me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, I'm not hearing. I'm not seeing anybody say anything. Audio's good. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. I said audio's good. All right, so I'm good. DJ Prime, shout out DJ Prime. Thank you, uh, Sister Myra, <laughs> Sister Myra. Yes. Yeah. Oh, welcome back to the show. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, Always glad to be back, brother, brother Rich. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Today, today, when did spring start? Yesterday? Was it? Well, they say spring start yesterday. I still go by the 21st. Mm -hmm. So today, uh, well, but also. Why, why the you go by the 21st? Um, I just, I mean, because sometimes you see them stretch it from like the 20th, the 19th, the 20th, mm -hmm. 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So rather than trying to, you know, keep all that in mind, I just always feel like the 21st is the, what, what I look at. Mm -hmm. Um that um not only the spring first day of spring but this is the first day of aries oh. so we're welcoming uh haru's energy to the table aries that's and, my aries remember i tell you aries, yes, aries. Yes. my pops i'm really that was excited pops. about that i'm excited about that this is really our true um you know new beginning mm -hmm. um the new year our new year and um you know, I'm really excited about Aries coming in because it is the spiritual warrior. Mm -hmm. It is with spiritual warfare. And it's in line with everything being wrapped up, um, you know, on the um, physical illusion mm -hmm. end of things. Mm -hmm. And now uh, a new spiritual energy dealing with warfare, you know, counteracting mm -hmm. all the things that has... Um, not been so good, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially uh, you know in the ninth since the 1900s because that's the number for collective alchemy. So we've been under this collective alchemy, and we've been under the sacrificial struggle half throughout the 1900s, mm -hmm. and now we're stepping in the opposite balance of that, where it's mm -hmm. time to come back in spiritual reward and spiritual empowerment. So this is marking a new beginning where we're now stepping up uh, to a new uh, spiritual empowerment, you see. So, Excellent. Yep, that is very, very. That's why I got my red on because it's oh. uh, fire, fire element. Yeah. So the red for, for Aries and um, this new spiritual warfare. Another thing about that is Pisces. What, you know, what we just left mm -hmm. yesterday uh, is the sign of the final death. You know, where Scorpio is death and rebirth, uh, Pisces is the final death. And Pisces is also the sign of the illusion. So I'm putting that to mean the final death of the illusion. Mm, excellent. Yes, excellent. certainly is. Certainly is. So. All right. We're we about to get started, family. Uh, everybody's still coming in the room. Family, make sure you like the video. Memo, I always tell you that's very important. Make sure you like the video and make sure you share it. Tell your friends and family we are live. They will definitely benefit from tonight's show. All right, let's get to a few ads, family. Then we're going to get the show started. Once again, thank you for joining us. We got the queen. We got the oracle with us tonight. Uh, don't miss it, family. Do not miss this, whatever you do. I see somebody said earlier they was in the gym on the treadmill. I forgot your name, brother, but I, I seen it. And, I, and uh, you know, I appreciate it, brother. Wherever you at, they trying to catch this show. So that's what's up. Let's get to a few commercials and then we go get started, family. All right. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out my brother King Simon, one of the best when it comes to numerology. Text him your full name, date of birth, 347-496-1022. He also has a course on Udemy.com, an introductory course. Check that out and you'll get uh, more information on his additional courses. Family, make sure you also check out Black Magic University. That's magic spelled with a K. That's uh, my site that I got my workshops on and we're going to have physical products on there as well real soon family so make sure you get well acquainted with the uh magicians university all right family besides that oh i gotta give a big shout out i'm getting ready to um open up uh to uh businesses to promote again 
And um, I got a commercial. I want everybody to do commercials this time, fam. So make sure you text the number. Why am I thinking at the bottom? Where's my thing at? Yeah, make sure you to um, if you're interested in advertising, text um, promo to 646-760-7806. So you can text promo to 646-760-7806, family. A couple of y'all already reached out. I'll be getting back to everybody uh, wow. soon. Uh, to get y'all ready for April, all right? Um, I want to, uh, hey, Sister Marm, you know, my mother actually wrote a children's book. Uh, oh. She passed away in 07, but yeah. she wrote she wrote a book before she passed away, and my sister recently got it published. So I, I, yeah, actually, last year, yeah, last year she got it published. So I'm real proud of that. And um, I want to uh, show the family the commercial. This is the commercial for the book. If you haven't seen it, I just got it last week. But uh, yeah, family, check out the commercial for the book. Hey there, had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out, my pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. All right, make sure y'all go to Amazon and get that. Kayla Petey and the Forest family. And uh, like I said, if you're interested in ad and ad and pro promoting your products, text promo to 646-760-7806. Let's get started, Sister Myra. Let's get started. All right. All right. And um, you're the best person when you want to promote something. Let, you, let me give you the list of, um, you know, I'm on, on Shopify. Okay. And they keep a list of everything. I mean, they keep account of everything. Mm -hmm. And the people that are buying for my website, the people that are scheduling, let me give you the list of countries mm. from your program. Oh, yeah, got, I mean, yeah, yeah. I love to know that. Who's watching? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we got the U.S., of course, at the top, mm. Mm. U.K., Canada, France, mm. Australia, Mexico, Trinidad, mm. Tobago, Bahamas, mm. Kenya, South Africa, Japan, mm. Germany. Mm. These are all the, the places that are... Um, Scheduling consultations. <laughs> wow. wow! Did you know your outreach was that extensive? Yeah, I, I didn't. Um, I didn't know Germany was watching. I knew yeah, Kenya was Germany. watching. I knew South Africa, Germany. That's why I didn't. I didn't know that yeah. before. Yeah, that's, that's the last one that came on Germany. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live in Germany. That's funny. Oh but, yeah. When you when, you, when you, how how was it out? how was it out there when you was out? Oh, there? it was. I like Germany pretty good. You know, my stepfather was in the service. That's how come okay. we got to travel a little bit, and mm. I kind of like Germany. It was. It kind of remind me of home. Um, you know, people were nice. You know, but mm -hmm. you know, I was on the base and everything. So, but mm. it was a good experience. Yes, it was. Uh, okay. But right. uh, so I know we're doing the tarot today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So. so so the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, unless you're into the esoteric side of things, you either think it's evil or you think it absolutely makes no sense that a person could shuffle some cards and then tell you, you know, uh, about yeah. yourself, about your energy, about your potential future and everything. So, yeah. um, you know, this is a new paradigm that we're entering in. This yeah. is something that you taught for many years, but I feel as though a lot of people are just now um, resonating with the information. So it'll make a lot of sense right now to, uh, people that even, didn't even appreciate it before they might appreciate it now. So yeah. I think you know, you gave me a reading, um, uh, many, 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 many years, 2005. And, yeah. um, I know I was like, damn, I got to reach out to sister Myra. So, uh, talk to us a little, give us a little introduction on, is it tarot or tarot? I mean, I guess whichever way, you know, yeah. your, your spirit tells you to say it. But I always say, uh, I go back and forth, Tarot, mm. Tara, I, I go mm. back and forth. I think they're more familiar with the Tarot. Mm. Um, mm. That's the term that's most familiar. Mm. Um, but um, like I said, we have to, what we need to do is learn how to trust what we get from our own spirit. So mm. however it identifies it to you is the right way, <laughs> you mm. know? That's what you have to go by. And, um, you know, like we were saying earlier, um, <clears throat> this is, um, we're entering Aries. It's a wonderful energy. It's a new beginning and a whole new level of reality. Um, 
and where um, things are going to start taking more of a spiritual connotation. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the Tarot, I did find a definition that I kind of vibe with. I'm going to read that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it kind of describes, um, it says here, uh, the Tarot is a series of visual images of ancient wisdom uh, in the form of esoteric teachings. Uh, hidden in the symbols, this teaching can be deciphered by using the right brain, intuitive mind, to read the energy of the images on the cards. And see, so the thing is, is that um, that phrase, the right brain, is, is, is very important here. Um, you know, because I had went... Um, and looked at some um, comments, you know, after one of the presentations we did. And, mm -hmm. and there were a few people um, debating the issue that I was using uh, the Gregorian calendar for, you know, the 222222 series. And um, mm -hmm. so I just want to come on here and stress that if you're not going to be dealing in your right brain, you are not going to be able to follow mm -hmm. what I'm putting out here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just not a left brain endeavor, right. you know, which means, you know, the masculine detail, logic and reason. And it is time for us to uh, kind of supersede that, you know. I did do uh, deal with the um, Gregarian calendar at the Hammett Summit, which was over 20 years ago. I thought I had put that, you know, issue to rest, you see, mm -hmm. because um, my premise is, is that... Um, we're holistic people. We are the creators. We energize according to what we uh, perceive, you know, to be real. You mm -hmm. know, so um, when I talk about being a holistic, that's inclusive of everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everything is inclusive. And whatever perspective you want to, you know, look at uh, is the perspective of what you're going to create from. You're going to create your, own, create your own reality. No one or nobody has more power than you do to create your own reality. Mm -hmm. And that comes from what you perceive, just like you were asking about tarot or tarot. You know, it's just how your spirit reveals it to you. Mm -hmm. And your spirit is the one who's going to give you your own uh, language of symbolism. Mm -hmm. The spiritual language is symbolic and you cannot be literal you know, the people that are questioning the Gregorian calendar, I, I, I suppose if you asked them what sign they were or when their birthday was, I, I bet you they would have an answer based on the Gregorian calendar. You see. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because they created that reality, you know, from what they perceive to be uh, their birthday. You know, if I look at January 8th, it's my birthday. I'm going to live that. You know, I'm going to open that energy up in my reality mm -hmm. and that's how I'm going to create my reality from that perspective. So let's stop arguing details, you guys. We're supposed to be superseding that. We're supposed to be getting into um, that right brain, which is conceptual mm -hmm. uh, because that is the spiritual language symbolism. Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready to expand and look at it symbolically, then um, yeah, you, you're just not going to be able to, to follow, you know, mm -hmm. the, so uh, right. I wanted to stress that because that is uh, what we have to do. We have to look at that right brain. Um, so um, let's see. Let's see here. Um, the Tarot, it consists of uh, 78 images. There's 78 cards mm -hmm. in the Tarot. And I break them down into three categories. I know most of them will describe two. Uh, but I go with the, you have what you call the minor a karma, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, the court cards, what I call the court cards, and a lot of uh, systems will connect those to the minor and the court cards. But I like to put a separation between the minor arcanas, which really deals with the mundane issues. You see mm -hmm. everyday mundane issues. Then when you get to the court cards, you're, you're usually dealing with um, uh, certain people, and we're looking at the royal people. We're looking at the royal family. So the court cards consist of like the, the king, the queen, uh, and we have the prince and the princess, or they sometimes call the page. Mm -hmm. 
So those are the four um, categories that, um, you know, that we look at when we look at um, the, court, the, the court cards. Then we have what you call the major arcana cards. Mm -hmm. And the major arcana cards are, um, I'd say there's about um, uh, 22, 22 major arcana cards, you know, uh, starting from zero, which is the full card, all the way up to 21, which is the um, world card. <clears throat> and, um, and the world card I've been bringing up quite a bit. As especially when we talked about the 22, mm -hmm. because the world card is the final card of the major arcanas. Is so, and that is number 21, and that is the one where all your past lives comes together in culmination mm. and fulfillment. You see, and that's what the world card is indicating, which is how we were able uh mm -hmm. To the, how I was able to identify the 21, the 12, 21, 21 mm -hmm. as the culmination peak. Mm, okay. You know, okay. Of everything now coming together for fulfillment, which has then propelled us to that 22 that we were talking about, which is spiritual mastery. Mm -hmm. So that world card, that's the 21, it's the 22 of major arcana cards. Now, when we go back to the minor arcanas, um, we're going to be looking at four suits, four suits with the minor arcanas. And the four suits consist of what we call the swords. And the swords are, now, we're going to compare this with the uh, a deck of cards. You see a regular deck of playing cards. So when we look at the um, swords, we're looking at the spades. You know, when we look at a regular deck of cards, mm -hmm. they're comparable to the spades in a regular deck of cards. Then we're going to look at um, the elements. You know, I'm an elemental person. Mm -hmm. It's all about the elements to me. I think um, that's the ultimate, the four elements. I don't think you can get any higher than the four elements when you're mm -hmm. looking at spiritual energy. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, they represent the four members of the royal family. You see, uh, the air element is the father component, father spirit. Uh, the uh, fire element is the sun, you know, um, S-O-N individual and S-U-N collective. But mm -hmm. the fire is the sun. And then we have the, uh, or, or like in the, the uh, tarot, that would be the prince, you know, and the air element would be uh, the swords. And mm -hmm. then we have... Um, what we call the the heart card, uh, which is actually the cups, and that deals with the water element. So that's going to deal with the mama component, the mm -hmm. love aspect, you see. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have um, the pentacles, and the pentacles deals with the um, the earth element, uh, which they call the diamonds in the regular deck of cards. So those are like the four suits of the minor arcanas, you see. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really do too much with the uh, minor arcana cards because, like I said, those are are pretty much the mundane level, you know. Um, so when I did my uh, tarot readings, I always um, just used the court cards and the major arcanas because mm -hmm. the major arcanas is going to what is going to tap you into the the spiritual uh, energy, the spiritual connotation. Um, so, but. You know, um, that's how you get a gist of what um, uh, those suits represent. Uh, once we get past the um, minor arcana, then we go, like I said, to the court cards. That's where we deal with the king, the queen, the prince, and the princess, or they call the page. Um, and I already told you how that applies to uh, the four elements. To me, that's the highest of vibrations. Remember, we're talking energy <clears throat> vibrations, people, energy vibrations. Um, that is what the, makes the whole universe go round is energy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how, how you, how you can uh, take your energy uh, when it comes to um, what you're energizing in your vibrations. So, um, so those are the three levels we're looking at when we're looking at the Tarot deck, we're looking at the minor arcanas and that consists of like 40 cards. And then we look at the um, court cards, uh, which consist of uh, the 16. Uh, and then we look at the 
major arcanas, which is 22, 22. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that interesting because that is the spiritual master number. And we we into um no we in the year two 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 so yeah, yeah two two that's what I'm saying. Everything is symbolism. Mm -hmm. We got to look at everything symbolic because that's how you connect the dots. With spirit, you have to connect the dots. You see, in other words, you get one. Uh, one thing will take you to the next, to the next, to the next, till it comes full circle and you see the whole picture. Because anytime you're looking at a part of the whole, that's the illusion. Mm, uh, mm. Spirit don't show itself until it's ready to complete or fulfill itself. So, mm, mm. Um, and that's that two halves make a whole, you know, the balance mm. of those. The ultimate um, harmonization is when you're balancing those two halves, two halves, yeah. 180 degrees, the other 180 degrees for the full 360 spiral. So when you look at the Tarot, I mean, that is mainly what you're looking at, all those symbolisms. Honestly, this is why I had to give up doing the Tarot readings because I'm a Capricorn and I'm very, very thorough. <laughs> uh -huh. And when you look at the Tarots, there's so many things that it opens up in the cards. I mean, you're looking at numerology, you're looking at the elements, you're looking at, you know, um, the figure, the whatever uh, picture uh, or image, uh, as they mentioned. So there's just so many things that you can look at in the Tarot deck. You know, it would take me, I mean, already it takes me three to four hours to do a reading, but Ooh. Would take me even longer, you know, when I was doing the tarot deck because of the many different aspects you can look at with the tarot deck and go into that. You see, let, so, let me see if I could share an image because okay. I'm trying to because I yeah. want people to get a visual. Um, yeah, and I had my cards, I don't think I left them out here. Yeah, my, my computer's not letting me, damn man, for some reason, it's not letting me share my um, okay. I think okay. Got it. Chrome has lost. Uh, well, I'll try to um f uh, get that together. In the okay. meantime, in the meantime, um, how did they even come up with these images, like the fool and these these symbols? Like, how did they even decide like this will determine somebody's reality? How did how do we come up with this? Is amazing stuff here. Right. It's um, like I said, like I said in the beginning when I read it, it's an ancient. This is an mm -hmm. ancient system of divination that has been left, you know, to us by the ancestors. When we came more into the physical reality of things, you know, in order for us not to lose touch with our spiritual information, these are the type of images um, for divination that was, um, you know, uh, given to us, you know, by the ancients so that we can continue to have a connection and a con uh be able to tap into that spiritual information. And the thing is, is that um, it's all about um, your own spirit. Let's see, because I got this part where it says, how does it work? How does it work? Um, the universe is about energy, energy vibrations. That's what makes the whole universe go around. That's the whole um, thing of the universe is it's energy vibrations as well as balance. That is the key to the universe. So this is about tapping into your own spirit, your own spirit. Remember, that's the first relationship, partnership, or spiral we have to complete is one with our own spirit. So it's not so much... Um, you know, that they left this system that um, can just um, give us personal information uh, symbolically um, that applies to everyone. It's about you and your spirit and how your spirit is the one through your energy, vibrations, connects you to the energies of the universe, you see, mm. symbolically. And as you connect to the energy of the universe, you're tapping into those symbols or that symbolic language of mm. spirit, you see. Mm. So it's the symbolic language 
that is opening up the information as your own individual and personal spirit, you know, guides or leads the way to tap into the vibrations that are going to be pertinent for the message you need to receive. Did that make sense? I know that got yeah. a little cryptic there. No, no, definitely. You know, yeah. But yeah. your own spirit is the one that will guide and maneuver you know, when it comes to what vibrations it wants to open up for you symbolically in order for you to receive the message that is pertaining to who you are in your energy from the highest level. So so if you're sitting down across the table from somebody and you're doing a reading from them, their energy is going to affect the shuffling of the cards? because That's how I do my readings. I'll start oh. off, I'll say... I'm going to start shuffling the cards. You tell me when to stop. Yes. Oh, that's 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 how you do it. That's how I do it. Okay, I don't remember. And I've had readings where they'll say something like, just say your name or, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, remember, we're dealing with energy vibrations. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that's going to go beyond our five senses. And that's what people have a problem identifying with you see but you have your own energy everybody has their own energy and their own spirit is their blue just like we talk about uh fingerprints you mm. know nobody has the same well you have your own spiritual energy you know that is unique and it's your own blueprint to who you are when it mm. comes to tapping into uh, spiritual information or higher level information. So yes, it is dependent on how your spirit can guide and maneuver, you know, uh, to express the symbols of energy that pertains to the message it wants you to receive. Uh, every time I do a reading, I start off and I tell them, this is not my message. Mm. This is your spirit's message. I'm just the messenger. OK, mm -hmm. I call myself the reporter for the cosmos and usually that spirit will validate that fact, you see, because it'll bring up something, you know, as I'm reading, as I'm interpreting, it'll bring up something that um, I don't have a clue, you know, and I'm dependent on the client to help, you know, say uh, something like the house comes up mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, it doesn't fit the context of you know, I don't know how this house fixed the context of what message I've been delivering. And then that's when usually uh, the client will step in and say something like, oh, yeah, I had a dream about a house last night. Or, you know, I just moved into my grandma's house. You see, mm. So mm. that is how it will expose. And what we're tapping into is a subconscious energy. Mm -hmm. The subconscious, that is when we talk about the left brain versus the right brain, the conscious mind represents uh, the right, the, the left brain and the subconscious mind represents the left brain. So mm -hmm. we're tapping into a subconscious ancient memory, Akashic records in the energy vibration, you see, of what um, your spirit is opening up for you uh, symbolically in order to connect you to the many and multitude of levels, you know, mm -hmm. that your vibration, you know, have access to or are a part of, you know, identifying uh, with that energy, depending on what particular um, message is being mm -hmm. opened up for you. Does the reader's energy have to be a particular way at the time they're reading. Like, what if the reader's having a bad day? Will that affect the outcome of the cards for whoever's getting the reading at that time? Um, not, I don't think so. Not usually, mm -hmm. um, because what we're doing is our spirit is now taking the lead here. Okay. okay. And guess what? Spirit and physical are opposites. Okay. Yes. Yes. So. I mean, so that means if you've had a bad day on the physical end, that may be a good day for your spirit. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I like that answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I always say if you take it into your hands, you tie spirit's hands. Yeah. Um, you doing your partnership with your spirit, um, you do the maximum for what you can do on the physical half. Mm. And when you've reached the maximum, it's like a tag team match because two mm. 
opposites can't occupy the same space at the same time. Mm -hmm. One has to give way to the other. So when you've done all you can on the physical half, that is when you tag your spiritual partner. You come out of the ring, okay? Yes. Your spirit goes in the ring behind the scenes and your spirit will be the one that goes up into the universe, gathers the energy that's going to match the, the amount of energy you've invested on the physical half. And when it's matched that energy, that is when it's going to fulfill or complete that spiral, that 360 spiral. We can only do 180 degrees. You can only do 180 degrees on the physical half, then your spirit does 180 degrees on the spiritual half. And when we bring that together, that's those two halves, completing that 360 degree spiral. Mm. That is how you open up the vortex mm. of vibration to access the higher energy of the universe. The higher energy of the universe, that's that ancient energy. That's already, you know, that's already set. That's already there. Mm. And it's just a matter of us being able to tap into whatever level we need to tap into to mm. open up the information of that energy from the universe, which is tied into who we are uh, from antiquity, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then it depends on the level, you see. There's a multitude of levels. That's another thing a lot of people don't take into consideration, is that there's a multitude of levels. You have the individual level, then you have the couple level, you know, have the uh, family level, you know, all the way up until the... Um, um, you know, the um, community, um, your nation, you know, earth level, global level, you know, all the way up to the universal level. So there's always going to be a multitude of levels if, as to which how high you take your vibration. And the higher you take it, you know, the more you're tapping into the royal level of the universe. And, you know, we're energy transmitters as well as receivers. Yes. So it's about what you send out because remember my most famous saying, spirit moves inside out, mm -hmm. not outside in. What you're sending out is what you spiral back. Mm -hmm. So, and now more than ever, we have to be very, very, very um, conscientious about our thoughts now because that's how we maneuver spiritually through the thoughts. So, when we're thinking pessimistic, we're going to energize pessimistic. Mm -hmm. if we're thinking optimistic, we're going to energize optimistic. And it all starts from within. The first prerequisite, you know, what I tell people is the universe is not trying to save the world right now. It's only trying to identify who qualifies to step up as a new ruler. It's going to be Ooh. a new spiritual rulership that's opening up for mm -hmm. the Aquarius age, okay? Mm -hmm. So who steps up as a new ruler? That is what is being identified now. Mm -hmm. and the, there's two prerequisites that the universe judges you on as to if you qualify to step up as a new ruler. Number one, you have to be secure mm -hmm. internally. Earth and water are internal. Earth and water are feminine, internal. That's where we get into the subconscious domain, uh, the antiquity. Uh, the mama is the water component who represents the ancient of ancients. So the mama tells us our ancient lineage. Where did we come from? Our ancestry. That is her domain of rulership. Mm. Father spirit is mama's soul and father's spirit. Father spirit tells us where we're headed. How do we move forward and fulfill our spiritual purpose and destiny? Mm. And so that is, um, so we have to tap into uh, where we came from, the foundation. And how do we move that energy forward in order to fulfill our spiritual purpose and our spiritual destiny? You see, Myra, this is important. I just thought about this. What would yeah. you tell um, the young queens out there? And another question after this, I probably ask is why 
our women usually uh, tarot readers? And, st and yeah. I'll ask that. Maybe that could be the second question. But the first one is, um, what advice would you have for people out there, the queens or whatever, that they may be interested, their spirit may resonate with the information, but because of the conditioning, their logical mind may say, this is evil, this is witchcraft. Or, you know, this is, this is just, I don't know about this. How this sounds like, I don't, this sound like some devil stuff. What advice would you give, would give to those sisters that's watching right now? That's on the fence of this. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, we have been, um, we've come through a serious programming. <laughs> the illusion. Remember I said, one of the things I'm most excited about is Pisces represents the illusion. Pisces represents the sign of the subconscious. And um, so uh, it's also where they created the illusion. In other words, you probably heard me say before that they put a bridge between us moving our spirit out from the soul or the subconscious, and they're moving their spirit out from emotional doubts, fears, and guilt. Mm -hmm. That's how we've been programmed to stay at a lowered vibration, you know, in this illusion, in this matrix, you see, we've been usurped from our true parents. I mentioned righteous father spirit and mama universe. Those are our true universal high level parents. Um, but we've been um, usurped from them. We've been removed from our connection. We've fallen under the auspices of the father of illusion the Ma of Tricks, the Matrix, and the Ma of Terra, materialism, mm. which has programmed us in false values to this illusion to keep our vibration at a low ebb so mm. that we stay vulnerable to attack, in other words, you see. Mm. Mm. Um, so um, the people who are afraid of this information or who are concerned about it, if it sounds, you know, um, like devil worship or evil. Um, and, and that, I'm afraid to say, came from um, the subconscious programming of, of the uh, illusion. One of the first ways that they programmed us subconsciously in the illusions through fears, doubts, and guilt, religion. <laughs> Religion was one of the first tools that mm. they used. And mm. it is the religion that is telling you, oh, yeah. this is yeah. wrong. You know, yeah. this is going against, this is where the guilt come from. Because you can't lift your vibration in doubt, fears, and guilt. Those mm. are the three things mm. that will undermine your spiritual vibration rising to that highest level. Okay? So they programmed us in doubts, fears, and guilt so that we don't lift our vibration to the higher levels and start accessing the royal level of the universe and start empowering ourselves. There's certain people who do not want us to supersede this illusion. Mm -hmm. And that's how they programmed us. And they're programming us daily through those doubts, fears, and guilt. Every time you turn on your TV set, you see, mm -hmm. you're getting programmed. And doubts, fears, and guilt. You may not even be realizing it. You know, mm. you can watch a movie you identify with, and there's a subliminal programming going on. Mm -hmm. Going on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're bigger than this physical reality, um, mm. and as I mentioned, uh, what puts us at the top of the hierarchy um, is the melanin. You see. Uh, melanin is what puts us at the top of the hierarchy uh, when it comes to spiritual energy, because not only is melanin a conducer of energy, but it also gives us the ability to harmonize energy because you don't blend energy. And so the, where we have been um, taken away from that um, by those who don't have access to those higher vibrations, um, like I said, um, they can't come up there to get us, so they have to pull us down mm, deep. to their level deep. to make yes. us vulnerable to mm. their attack. Um, we went into the Aquarius age in 2013, and Aquarius is the sign of I know. 
Mm. And I, my, why I call myself a holistic is because I don't believe in 12 individual signs. I believe in six axes of energy. You have to balance those opposites. Mm. So the opposite sign of Aquarius is Leo. And Leo is the creative ruler. It's the sign of the creative ruler. Mm. Aquarius is the sign of I know. So mm. when you balance those two, I know I am a creative ruler in order to activate that rulership. If you don't know who you are, which is a higher being, a universal being, we're spiritual beings having a physical experience, not the other way around. But someone else who is not at that level has convinced us mentally, you know, that to tap into that highest level is evil or is, you know, um, a bad thing to do, you mm. know, because it's bad for them because they lose control when we step up in our knowing as to who we are as, you know, the creative rulers of the universe because of the melanin that gives us the ability to draw energy from the universe as well as to harmonize that energy or balance that energy. Because mm. two halves make a whole. If you can't balance it, then it becomes uh, abusive, you see. Mm. Uh, you have to balance it in order for it not to be abusive. So they're tra trapping us from keeping, you know, from tapping into that by scaring us through our fears, mm. our doubts, and our guilts, uh, keeping us out of tapping into that. They showed you, again, again, the movie, the Ma I'm always talking about the movie, The Matrix. The Matrix yeah. yeah, and that's what they, that when they took Neil to the Oracle, and because mm. he doubted, he's mm. trying to identify his power through his ego, and he doubted his power. And that's when the oracle said, nope, you're not the one. I don't know what you're waiting for. And that's when she no. put the sign above the door that says, know thyself. Self. That is the Aquarius and Leo axis of energy. You have to know you are a ruler before you become a ruler. If you don't know it, then you, then that's you, you're not it. That's what she mm. told Neil. You're not the one because you don't know no, you. No. Not until you know it do you become it. That is so. You go ahead. So spirit tells you what you need to hear at that time. So the spirit could contradict itself five years later, but it really didn't contradict itself. It just told you what you needed needed to know at that particular exactly. time. Absolutely. The concept. Yeah. Because when he tried to tell Morpheus. Well, you know, the Oracle said I wasn't the one. You know, that's what he told him. He said he told she, the Oracle told you what you needed to hear. <laughs> hey, at, at one time, the uh, my spirit told me Jesus was real, and the whole you know the whole Christianity. You know, I needed to go with that, and then the further I got into that, I had to go to the next level. And I remember when I uh, even when I left religion alone, I was like, damn, why did why did my spirit lead me to the church? And then I understood that life is a journey. And I couldn't just jump to metaphysics. I had, to, I, had to, I had to walk there. You can't just go, you know, so I had to, what was a journey. So I, it made me, it made me understand that life was a journey. It made me understand that, uh, like what you just said, the spirit tells you what you need to hear at that particular right. time. And you got to just trust the journey. So yeah, that's, yes. that's fact. Holistic, holistic. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And the different levels. I did the same thing. I went from, uh, Christianity, uh, to the idealism of, uh, the nation of Islam. I never joined the nation, but I I like hmm. the idealism of it. My mother was like that. Yeah, she yeah. didn't join, but she yeah. Right, yeah. right. I like the idealism of it um, because it's centered on on black. You know your you know your black power, and hmm. then from there is when I took the stepping stone to metaphysics. Mm -hmm. And that's what Next really step. opened everything up. So from the from uh and I still I have Christian clients. I because I can reach them at their level. Yeah. It's about expanding, it's not about changing yes. their perspective. Because, like I said, when we deal with the father's domain, the air element, um, that is about um, you know, um the the, the father, we are dealing with the father and the son. 
you know, in that half of the operation. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, uh, we're not saying it's, 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 it's wrong or it's bad, but it's, it had to be the foundation or the platform mm -hmm. now to reflect the opposite or the balance to that. That's where we go wrong. We, 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 we think that's it, that's it, mm -hmm. but it's about completing that half and then expanding the balance in the opposite half, like I said, two halves make a whole. Mm -hmm. So, and you have to complete one half in order to step up to, um, you know, the balance of the opposite half, you see, in order mm -hmm. to make a case for spiritual justice, there has to be a physical injustice that has not been reconciled in order for spiritual justice to come in and balance out the situation. But spirit is not going to do it at so much at the personal level. It's going to fix the problem um, uh, where the system, mm -hmm. where the system that contribute to your personal problems, that's what spirit will fix. The mm -hmm. system that contribute to your personal problem in order for it then mm -hmm. you know, the, to fix And that. also, I just want to give a shout out to all the Christians who watch the program. Some of the most beautiful people I've met in this yes. matrix have been Christian, so I'm not judging you. I just do what I do. Y'all do what y'all do. And, you know, if you resonate with this information, you do. But I have met some wonderful people that are still in religion. So, you know, I'm not a follower of religion, but I know wonderful people that are. And you got to yes. do what you got to do for you. So shout yes. out to all the Christians who may watch Black Magic 360. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. have plenty of Christian clients. Yeah. And I just meet them and try to expand, you know, uh, their perspective. But, um yeah, I mean, um, that is, you know, holistic. That's why I call yeah. myself a holistic. That means everything is yeah. included, including the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and whatever uh -huh. calendar you want to look at. But it's uh -huh. all part of a whole, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, that's what holistic means. Everything is included. Everybody brings their own unique you know, creative uh, process to the table. We've all been mastering through many, many lifetimes, you know, in the creative purpose, we chose to contribute. Mm -hmm. And now the 21 is saying how we're now ready to culminate the mastery that we've been um, doing for all these lifetimes. The This is the lifetime to bring all that mastery to the table in culmination and contribution to um, this um, fulfillment of this holistic or universal purpose. Mm -hmm. It's a universal purpose being fulfilled, okay? And we're just the individual aspects of that. Mm -hmm. And each one of us have a unique and individual creative purpose to bring to the table and contribution to mm. this holistic ev evolutionary process, you see. Mm. It's an infinite process of transformation, regeneration, and evolution of spiritual rulership. That is the ultimate goal of the universe, you see. Mm. Mm. And so each one of us have been mastering and now we're ready to make our final contribution in that and like when you were at another lifetime or when you were at another age in this lifetime you know um what you knew uh, and built on in your knowing you know was your building blocks you know mm -hmm. for for the next level you know mm -hmm. never you know stagnation is the problem mm -hmm. stagnation you know mm -hmm. um i'm not a religious person um because, but like you said, I got many religious people that are in my family. I love them unconditional, you know, and the, and the issue is not sitting in judgment. You said the right word there. We have to learn how to love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people take that word unconditionally wrong. We're not talking mm -hmm. about just taking anything or letting anybody do anything to you. Mm -hmm. We're saying when you love unconditionally, that means you don't sit in judgment of others, you see. Mm -hmm. You don't sit in judgment. Mm -hmm. That is what that means, you see. Mm -hmm. um, we all have a unique purpose to bring to the table. And only our spirit 
is the one that can give each and every one of us that guidance. You never, and you you guys saw me do that thing about the hand a thousand times. You take a hand, you put this up here. <laughs> you take a hand, that's a hand, but you got a thumb, you got a, a index finger, you got a middle finger, a ring finger, the small finger, you got the palm, the back of the hand, the nails, all these components come together to make a hand. Okay, but each one have a unique role and contribution to the whole or the hand. Mm. And, you know, if we were blending and we all blended into thumbs, how much will we get done here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm. everybody has a unique contribution to this holistic purpose. Mm. And so I can't sit in judgment of yours no more than you can sit in judgment of mine, you see. Indeed. It's about harmonizing energy. You don't mm. blend energy, you harmonize energy. Mm. And when you do astrology, they have things, um, you know, what they call angles. Um, that's how energy communicates with each other through angles, which they turned into angels. But it's angles of energy and how they communicate. You have um, like a sextile. That's like a, uh, that's a 60 degree angle. And that means there's excitement between those two vibrations, you see, mm -hmm. uh, that's coming together. Um, you have what you call a, a, a trine, you know, um, where there's three components coming together, you know, through the elements. Like you have three fire signs, three air signs, three earth signs. That's what you call a trine. So, you know, energy interacts through these angles uh, and how you harmonize those energies, vibrations. Spirit is a combination of energy. You have to pull energy to create spirit. You have to pull energy to create a spirit. Um, that's why they say where more than one is called in my name, so shall I be. Father spirit, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. You have to combine energy uh, to create uh, to, to, to have a, create a spirit. So that's what we have to do. We have to learn how to harmonize energy in order to come to that ultimate balance of those two halves in order to complete that 360 degree spiral. And that's how you open up a vortex and access the vibrations from the higher levels of the universe. And the higher you go in that vibration in the universe, the more you're tapping into the royal level. Of the so, get, get, uh, Sister Myra, give me an example. Like, let's say um, you're shuffling the cards. Like, mm -hmm. I seen um, there was this there was this young sister. Uh, uh, I I knew her from back in the day. Um, I forget Paris Williams. Uh, King Simon recently told me she she does tarot readings. Yes. And um, I was watching a YouTube channel, and she'll shuffle in a card to fall out, and she'll, she'll <sighs> you know they pick that card. Why? Yes. What? What? To explain that process about because the shuffling process seems so so uh, important. And then yeah. if a card pops out, they like take that card and they like aha, they do the reading on that card. So break that down for me, and also well, shout out to the sister uh, Paris Williams. Go ahead. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. Um, I um, yeah. Whenever I I'm shuffling and a, and a card pops out, um, I I don't usually just take that individually. What I do is I could you know, I could go ahead and lay out my full spread, uh -huh. but those cards that pop out, or if one or two, how many ever cards pop out, I always put those to the side because they're going to be significant, you know, mm -hmm. as we get into the readings and we're going to be able to tie back uh, to those cards. Those cards popped out because there was a significant meaning uh, or message mm -hmm. that, um was going to go above and beyond even what, you know, the reading was going to tell you. you know, mm -hmm. So that's special. You know, that's like, um, well, I don't know if you know astrological terms, you know, they talk about retrograde planets like a Mercury retrograde. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And whenever people, I always tell people if you have a Mercury, if you have a retrograde planet, um, especially if you have more than one, um, you know, um, give that person a special look because that retrograde planet is identifying where they're coming in to serve a special purpose. You see, mm -hmm. wherever their retrograde planet is at, they're serving a special purpose. And what I mean by retrograde is like the planet goes forward, then it goes back, 
then it goes forward again in what we call a direct movement. Mm. That means it's being painted with the energy brush three times mm. as it goes forward, back and forward again. It's mm. getting a painting in that particular energy, three coats, you see. And then that means uh, there's a special mission or a special purpose that they're here to serve through that energy, that planet, and that part of their their life, you see. So that's the same as a card popping out, you know. Um, there's a special meaning or a special purpose um, that's added to, you know, the message that you're here so, to deliver them. So if you're doing a reading for me and the hermit card pops out, what would that, like? or just not, it doesn't have to pop up, but if you pick, let's say you pick a hermit card, what would that mean for me if I'm sitting there doing, getting a reading well, it, for it, me? It means that you're, um, it, it's about you, probably going into isolation, you know, um, isolating yourself or going internal, getting messages from within and not looking outside of yourself for others, you know, to define what it is that you're trying, you know, to understand about what to do or where you're going. You know, it's about an internal thing. It's about you doing some soul searching, mm. isolating yourself for others so that you can get a clear signal from your own spirit and not get all this congestion <laughs> coming mm -hmm. in to obscure that message, you see. Are, so, yeah. are there neg I'm sorry, are there negative and positive cards, or it just depends on the combination of them? How does that well, work? Well, in the tarot deck particular, um, they we do in tarot deck, well, I used to we do what we call reverses. That means you take a maybe about a fourth of the cards mm -hmm. and you would reverse them in the deck you know, mm -hmm. and shuffle them. And if they get a reverse card, you know, like you mentioned the fool card, um, if you get an upright fool card, um, that is, um, you know, uh, being open, being mm -hmm. naive and open and trusting enough to follow your spirit to a new level. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you get a reverse fool card, mm -hmm. then it may indeed be talking about you're being foolish in some mm -hmm. area. You know, mm. that you're being rash and you're not rational, you know, but you're taking some foolish actions. So mm. that's what happens when it comes to, um, you know, the tarot cards and what they call the reverse cards, you see, mm. if the card comes through reversed. What's the most powerful card? Is there like a card that's the most powerful in the, in the deck? Which one I've been talking about this whole time, <laughs> even before now, the world card the world. of the major arcana card, number 21. Mm. That is why I was so excited at mm. the two, 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 because that's when spirit brought that realization to me, you mm. know, about the world card and how, why it signified the 21, you know, because here we got the um, 12, which is really 21, you know, the one and the two. Then you had 21, which is also, was is the 21. And then we had in the year 21. So that was nothing but a signal that that December 21st, 2021 was symbolic of the world card, where everything has come together in culmination all our last, 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 past lifetimes has now come together to culminate, you know, so that we can bring the full measure of our contribution to the table um, to fulfill this holistic and universal purpose that is now ready uh, to evolve us to a whole new level. Of Indeed rulership in the universe you see. So, somebody's asking sister myra brother yeah. rich will you please ask her what is her favorite spread to use oh, okay i've been using the um i've been using the um um cabalistic cross that's my favorite spread that's the one i've been really tied to and that's a 10 card spread uh, that's the one I use with my, um, I use the fortune cards, uh, the Tatiana fortune cards. Uh, I've been using those for quite a while now. Uh, that's what I transitioned from with the Tarot deck. Um, so uh, that's my favorite, the Kabbalistic cross, that 10 card spread they have. Uh, the first card is your, um, um, the first card represents your present position. 
And then the second card is what's directly in what energy is directly influencing your present position. And then we go to the position of what is just ahead. The third card represents what is just ahead, what position, uh, what is just ahead for you when it comes to your spiritual energy. And I always call this the training position. This is where your spirit gives you personal training. Um, and the just ahead period is like the next few weeks. So what kind of training is your spirit about to give you in the next few weeks to help you step up from a mundane level of power to a royal and creative level of power? That's the position that describes how your spirit is going to give you that training in the next few weeks as to how you're now stepping up out of the mundane to a creative level of empowerment. Then the fourth card of that um, Kabbalistic cross is the past. Mm. It's going to deal with the past, not just this lifetime. We're going to go back to your past lifetimes. This is the card that will tell you uh, and identify the purpose that you've been working on for many lifetimes, mm. you know, in order to uh, bring that uh, mastery to the table in this lifetime in the contribution to your holistic purpose. You take that card, the one in the past, you take that and combine it with your sun sign to understand your, your, your purpose, the purpose you're here to serve, the purpose you chose to take on and contribute. Um, so, cause your sun sign, the sun always represents your focus. Wherever you see the sun, that's where the energy is being focused. You see? So what, what, would, what would a person do? Like, say I go, I get a tarot reading from you. Then I get a tarot reading from somebody else mm -hmm. and the readings are different. Like, how do I decipher which reading was telling the truth? No, you work? don't. You don't. It's all part of everything so, okay. you bring all, you, all that is inclusive i always tell people get as many, many readings as you can because you're just getting nobody can give you the whole you see mm, mm. we got a whole you universe of information to tap into you see mm, mm. and not one person can be responsible for giving you that you see mm. so whatever reading you get is just another perspective that you add to the mix, you see. So, um, so no, it's not about um, you know competing messages. Matter of fact, when people get a reading from me, you know they're usually saying, "Well, um, when do I come back for the next reading?" When you've exhausted, you know, um, the energy of the past reading. In other words, when you've seen that unfold, when mm. you've seen that message come into fruition, and and now you're suckling on that. And you've got the message from that, and you're ready to do the next stage. Mm -hmm. Then you come back for a new, another reading. I'm going to use the same spread and the same cards, but it's going to give you a new meaning mm -hmm. or a new perspective depending on where you're at. We, yeah, the time yeah. that you get that reading. So, no, you holistic. That means everything. I mean, you can get messages. Like I said, you could be riding down the street. Um, and a billboard can mm -hmm. pop up a, a, and answer a question that's on your mind. Mm -hmm. That's spirit. Symbolism. That is the spiritual language. That's why you can't be left brain. You know, you can be riding down the street and a car pulls in front of you with license plates numbers, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And you add up those numbers. You <clears throat> Then you're sitting down excuse me, and all of a sudden on the clock, those same numbers that you saw on the license plates is on your clock, you see. Mm. That is definitely how your spirit is trying to get your attention. Add up those numbers, get a numerology message, look at the date, get an astrological message. We're being bombarded with messages. Mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of being perceptive. And, and, you know, like the person asked earlier, or you were asking about the people, you know, who think it's, you know, a spookism or uh, evil. evil or, yeah. You know, um, that is, um, you know, in other words, it's like um, we get bombarded with these messages so that we can understand this is not just something that's happening 
you know, coincidental. There's no such thing as coincidence, you see. Mm. And 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 it's uh, and 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 that's why we've been programmed not to follow the trail of those messages because if you follow the trail of those messages, you know, it's going to open up some enlightenment to you that goes beyond, you know, what anybody else outside of you can tell you. In other words, it's personal spiritual connection where your spirit is able to validate that to you, you know, above and beyond what anybody else would be privy to. So when you start getting those kind of messages from your own spirit repeatedly, you know, your spirit is going to be the one to convince you. I tell people that when I give them the reading, I said, I'm just the messenger. It's your spirit is going to be the one to have it sink in. You see, mm -hmm. you know, like when you did the reading in 2005, you know, I don't even remember, the, you know, the Sagittarius, you know, reference, you know, mm -hmm. once the reading's over, I'll get so many, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, I lost that, but your spirit didn't lose it. Mm -hmm. Your spirit was the one when you moved out from my reading that produced the results of the message that your spirit gave me to deliver to you. you mm. Mm. Not my message, your spirit's message. Right, yeah. I'm the messenger. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people, and I might've said this already, but uh, when I first started reading cards, I was very concerned about these things. I'm like, oh spirit, how can I be sure I'm telling people the right mm -hmm. thing? How can I be sure I'm giving them the right information? And my spirit said, it's not you, fool. Just read the cards. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. And it was the best advice my spirit could have gave me mm -hmm. because it liberated me. I'm not mm -hmm. responsible for the message. At all. Yeah. You no, know, I'm responsible for delivery. Now, that's where I'm a master. I'm a master in symbolism. <clears throat> so I can look at the symbols and interpret the message and deliver that message. But then I, I still need your feedback, you know? You know, I got, I had one guy who didn't want to get a reading. He, well, he wanted to get a reading from me, but you know, uh, the way I explained it, I'm saying I'm holistic. So I'm gonna give you the physical half. Then I'm going to give, put the spiritual half in balance with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the material of mm -hmm the the card as the physical half of the message and then i'm going to put the spiritual connotation in balance with that you see mm -hmm. well he had a problem with that you know you got to yeah. read anything you got to read all the spiritual teachers i went to all the spiritual um the messengers i went to they didn't have to read they could just intuit it you know i'm like well you probably need to go to one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to give you a reading in the way you think it should be getting. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to uh, prove or convince you that I'm doing a psychic thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not me. I'm not dealing in my ego. That's what my spirit pushed out of the way when it said, it's not you, fool. Just mm -hmm. read the cards. Mm -hmm. You know, your ego gets in the way of your of the message. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm yeah. open. I want to deliver that message in the purity of what your spirit wants you to receive. And that has to be without anything of my own understanding, my own knowing. I don't speak from my own knowing and understanding. I speak from what has been ordained to me to speak from the authority of what has been ordained for me to speak from when it comes to tapping into spiritual information. You see, so it's yeah. not my message. It's not me doing it. Beautiful. And I'm not here to try to prove I'm psyche. Mm. I know what you got in your closet. <laughs> and I, I, I am psychic, but I'm not a personal psychic. I'm a holistic psychic. I see the bigger picture and then I can put the individual aspects in line with the bigger picture. You see, so I look at the universe. I look at the energy, the planets and the configurations of the planets and how that energy is coming to the earth mm -hmm. and what that is influencing for us on the earth. And then I can take it down to an individual level 
when I'm looking at their individual energy and how that individual energy corresponds with the larger energy that we're being influenced from the universe that's opening up, you see. Indeed. I, I want to um, get to some Q&A. Uh, okay. A lot of people, we got about 2,000 people in the room. Wow. I want to say thank you to everybody who's tuned in. Like yeah. I always say, make sure you hit the like button, family. That's very important to get this esoteric <coughs> information out there to the people. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps the algorithm. I don't know how many likes I'm at in comparison to 2,000 people being here. But hit the like button. I'm going to get some q and I've seen y'all been asking questions, so I'm going to have to scroll up to get to the Q&A. Also, family, it's support time. Make sure you support the individuals that support you. I got my cash app at the bottom of the screen, and I want to put Sister Myra's cash app in the chat right now. Myra, I, I need to just, I need to write this down somewhere so I ain't got to ask you no more. Okay. Now I can just put it up there. Well, t- give me your cash app one more. Tell me your cash app. Okay, it's yeah, of course the dollar sign, uh-huh. and then uh, it's just Myra Moss, M Y R A, M O S S, and then the numbers eight one three. Eight one three, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, oh, and I and I really want to tell now. There's some like I told you, the international clients. Mm-hmm. Now some of them can text me, and some of them I can text back, but some of them I can't text back. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, and I don't know how many of them I can communicate with over the phone as well. So when I get international clients, um, you guys are going to have to reach out to me through my um, my email. That's mm-hmm. going to be the, the most secure way for us to make a connection because mm-hmm. uh, sometimes it's a hit and miss when it comes to the phone. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, and my my email is. Um, Moss Myra at yahoo.com. So, um, okay, no, take the, take the, uh, oh yeah, you got Sister Myra. Okay. So Moss Myra, it's just like the opposite of my cash app, except for, you know, I don't have 813 and I don't have the, the dollar sign, but it's just Moss Myra at yahoo.com. So okay. I, I advise my international clients to reach out to me that way because um, it's kind of difficult Um and it's all, always not um, available for me to be able to get back to you uh, through the text message or the phone call. So I wanted to put that out there as well. So. Hey, before we get to Q&A from the people, Myra, what do you think about uh, tarot card readings versus astrology? Like, are they comparable? Do you find that one is a little more accurate? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, like I told you, any, any way, any level, I used to do them both. As mm-hmm. you remember, because I did mm-hmm. them both for you, mm-hmm. uh, it's just one's more extensive than the other. One is going to be um, uh, focused in on a particular message, you see. And I always tell people the card readings are going to tap into the most prevalent issue, the most prevalent spiritual issue that you're wrestling with. Mm-hmm. And that's all it's going to deal with. I had a lady when I lived in Atlanta who wanted to get a reading on her book. Mm-hmm. Um, but she had other pressing issues that the reading dealt with. She had to come back to get the reading on her book after she dealt with that issue. So it's only going to focus on the most prevalent issue you're wrestling with at mm-hmm. the time. That's what the card readings will focus on. But mm-hmm. the astrological is going to give you your overall look at your energy. Mm-hmm. You know, where were all the planets sitting uh, at the moment and place and time of your birth? Uh, the date of your birth, uh, all the planets, what constellations, and how did they send their energy rays that converge together to make your collective or spiritual energy? Spirit is the collective. Physical is the individual. So, and that is what this is all about. We're the individual vessels that has access to, from our energy vibrations, where we can tap to through the different levels mm. out to the highest levels of the universe to tap into the energy vibrations from one end to the opposite end, you see. And as far as you can take it as an individual vessel to that highest collective uh, universal energy. And like I said, the four elements tap into that bank of energy represented by the four elements, which represents the four members of the royal 
universal spiritual family of energy. So you as the personal physical individual, and how can I take my energy vibration to the opposite universal collective energy? You see, so that's what your astrological does. It, it takes all those planets that were at your time of birth, where they were sitting, what constellations, what rays did they all contribute? You have a full universe of energy within you. Mm -hmm. Your sun sign is only what you came into this lifetime to focus through in your mm -hmm. energy. And it represents your, your personality you know, mm -hmm. um, your personal focus. The The sun always represents focus. It represents exposure, uh, clarity, you know. So you came in here to expose through the focus of that particular energy, you know, when it comes to um, the purpose you're, you know, mastering to contribute to this whole universal purpose, you see. So okay, let's yeah. uh, get to some Q and A, family. Okay. Uh, somebody says, "How does Sister Myra feel about collective readings?" Elective? What do you mean? Collective, like, collective, like collective. I guess group group readings. Uh, yeah, collective. Group, group, group readings. Yeah. Um, hmm. Um, of course, the more you pull energy, the bigger the spirit you create. You know, uh, the bigger you pull that energy. Uh, um, and um, the one, the, the the thing I did with uh, Spirit Doula, um, that's where I had people come together uh, and contribute their energy to energize, you know, Bobby Hammett. You know, I just wanted to say, let's all collectively come together and energize, you know, uh, some energy for Bobby Hammett. So mm -hmm. those are the, the more you combine energy, the more. You pull energy, the bigger the spirit you create, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as collective readings, um, yeah, I, I, I've been I, I, I've been doing some of that as well. Um, but, you you know, you just have to have a um, like um, like if we're talking astrological. We still have to have like a time, uh, you know, and a date, you know, to work with in order to, you know, um, tap into the information. Um, so um, if we can come up with a, a date and a time, you know, then we can do a reading on it. So yeah, um, the more the more you pull that energy, the bigger the spirit. This is what this is how they do their um, uh, collective rituals. That's more how I would define it collective rituals. Um, mm -hmm. The Super Bowls, um, the football games, the Olympics, this is how they get people to come together collectively and focus on what it is they want to energize to unfold for the year. I used to do the symbolism of the Super Bowl. Every year I, I would remember. do the symbolism yeah, of the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about the literal team. It was about their symbols, you see. And then I uh, could look up their, uh, the, the city the, the 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 energy of that city, you know, and um, and use the symbols to come up with some symbology of, you know, what energy. Like when when Spirit first had me do uh, a Super Bowl ritual or a Super Bowl um, explanation, um, it was right after 9-11. Um, it was in New Orleans. Um, it was the um, New England Patriots versus the uh, the Rams, uh, and um, the um, the Rams was like like we're saying today, Aries energy. We just went into Aries, Haru energy. Um, so it was like um, uh, uh, the royal sun uh, coming up against uh, 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 the patriarchic spirit. Well, well, how they symbolized it was war on America. The patriots versus war, you know. So energizing a war uh, when it came to being patriotic uh, are the patriarchs. And right after 9/11, right after that, uh, the Super Bowl is when they went to war with Iraq. You see, so that's how they did this collective uh, ritual in order to energize going to war 
uh, unfolding that energy for the year to go to war against Iraq. And I can go through a lot of Super Bowls to show you uh, what was being energized uh, symbolically mm. in that ritual to unfold, you know, um, for that year, you see. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the next question. Mex wants to know, Sister Myra, do you have any decks that you have crafted based on all your wisdom? I like to see diversity in the images on the cards. You know, I've got some uh, young lady that's continuing to prod me about that, you mm -hmm. know, about, um, you know, coming up with a deck of cards. Um, I just haven't, um, you know, I just haven't had the focus or maybe even the time <laughs> uh, to do that. Um, but there's so many uh, diverse cards. That's another reason I got away from the Tarot, you know, because the Tarot, you know, most people are doing readings from the Tarot deck and it's just the same, it's the same system. You know, of course, everybody has, you know, a different perspective and a different interpretation of how they're going to read that message. Um, However, I, after I had collected so many tarot decks, um, then I started collecting decks uh, that had, that were not, you know, I got angel cards, you know, I got um, um, rock cards, you know, I've got fairy cards, mm -hmm. you know, there's just a variety of cards. We just got to look for more than just the tarot, you mm. see. Mm -hmm. um, most people just kind of, it's kind of like a fallback, you know, to go to the tarot deck. Um, but there's many, many different, uh, cards. I, I probably got about 20 different types of decks of cards in there. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I even got a, a witch's deck, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and I kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just so many of them I, to me, anything I could come up with, you know, would you know, would still be redundant, as, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why my spirit hasn't had me really just focus on that. But um, mm -hmm. um, but I have been asked that before, you know, and okay. maybe maybe one day it will have me, you mm -hmm. know, um, go ahead and get in, get in on that. So, yeah. Indeed. Uh, Moderately Lace wants to know, sister, what kind of symbolism to study first? <laughs> if, if there is a if there is a first type you know i don't you know <laughs> i'm going to say what i always say i'm an elemental person i don't think you can get no higher than the elements because when i talk about your individual um as an individual vessel um okay like say with my deck um with the uh, deck i use we have what we call the woman card it's the woman and whenever the woman shows up, then I'm going to take that all away from you as an individual. Say you. This is representing a mother. So I'm going to say, Are you? Uh, do you have any children? They say, Yeah. I say, Well, this card represents you personally as a mother, but it's going to represent your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, your great 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 great, -great grandmother, all the way out to Big Mama. Mama Universe. So we're following that line of energy from an individual um, as mother all the way out through their mama lineage. We follow our lineage through our mamas, follow that lineage, our ancestral lineage, all the way out to the ancient of ancients, uh, Black Mama Universe. All colors come from the color black, original black Mama Universe you see. So from one end as mama, all the way out to uh, the ultimate mama universe, following that line of energy from one end to the opposite end, from the individual to the collective. That's, she's the water element. So that's connected to the water element. Then we do that with the father, the, the man, that'll be the air element, you see. The individual father, all the way out to righteous father's spirit, you see. Then we deal with the son and the daughter. So the mama is mama universe, the water element. Mm -hmm. Father is father's spirit, the air element. Mm -hmm. Then you have the son of power, S-O-N, the individual melanated. But then you have the collective, 
the sun, S-U-N, and you're going to carry that all the way out through the fire. Jupiter is a fire planet. So from the sun to Jupiter, you know, from there. So anywhere you can find that fire vibration of energy as far out as you can take it in the universe, now you're dealing with the sun um, uh, component. And then we have the earth, you know, that's the daughter component. So the physical man and the physical woman represents the daughter and the son, you know, the earth and the fire. This is why I said Trinity and Neil. They were playing the role of Leo and Virgo, Leo and Virgo, you know, Virgo, the earth, the, the woman, the daughter, wisdom, and Leo, the son, uh, 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 Neil, Leo, the son you see, um, the fire, power guided by wisdom. Power without wisdom is futile. We have to supersede the ego and open the heart, those are both Leo energy, to the value of the one of wisdom, Virgo, in order to um, step up to a righteous rulership. We can't be guided by the, the ego. Le uh, men can't leave the, the matrix in the ego. So they have to come out of their ego to come out of the matrix, you see. Mm. So superseding the ego and opening the heart to the value of the one uh, of uh, wisdom, which is earth and fire are the son and the daughter. So to me, everything is encompassed in those four elements. Every deity, every god, every archetype. Anything you want to talk about when it comes to spiritual energy is going to fall under one of those four elements. You see, the father deities or entities, the, the mamas, you know, what you got Hathor, Mama Universe, you got, um, you know, all kind of names, all the, the different names, uh, Mama Wata, you know, the different names only give you the different aspects of that energy you see mm. different characteristics of the water energy mm. you have the the sun you got haru you got uh osiris or osar you know the fire the sun mm. all those fall under the sun you know when we're talking about the father we're talking about father spirit we're talking about the mind the air element so people like uh deities like thoth you know and tahuti all of those will fall under the air element or the father component, you see. Mm. So each one of these are going to fall under one of those four elements. You can get no higher than the four elements. So, mm. Mm. yes, if you want to ask about what symbolism, I would say once you start studying those elements, there's spirits in the fire, there's spirits in the earth, there's spirits in the water, and there's spirits in the air. And how we harmonize our own personal internal um, energy to those na nature or natural energies um, mm -hmm. is how we harmonize, you know, and vibrate. You know, that's uh, yeah. Absolutely. Early, early, I was I was about to ask you, but I asked another question. Why are women usually the tower readers and oracles? Is it do men naturally are we naturally not intuitive, or is just something? we haven't been taught to tap into because it always seems like it's the Queens that deal with the uh, tarot and the Oracle information. Uh, it's just our affinity to mama universe, you know, the mm. feminine earth and water are feminine mm. and uh, air and fire are masculine external. Mm. Uh, mm. And so it's just our affinity. And like you, you're uh, earth, you know, and that gives you now see, if you do see men readers, it probably is going to be like a Virgo sign or a water mm. sign, you yeah. see. Because mm. one of the things about coming in, uh, like you're a male with feminine energy, this is helps you balance. That's the key to everything. So that gives you a head start in how to balance energy, you mm. see. Mm. And that would open you up better as a man than you know, an air fire man to mm. be able to tap into you know, um, that information, but it's just, as, as women, you know, our highest vibration, um, is connected to, uh, the feminine or the internal, uh, mama and daughter, you know, where the masculine, the air and fire is connected to the father and the son, you see. Mm -hmm. So that's just the vessel. You came in here in that vessel, 
um, so you can identify more. Men uh, have more in common with the, the air and fire reality, the external. Mm -hmm. The external, yes. The masculine, you see, mm -hmm. just are more, uh, have more affinity with the internal, the feminine, the earth and the water. And that's why we have a better connection uh, to mama magic. Uh, the men, and neither one is no better or worse than the other, you see, because everything mm -hmm. is about balance, you see. Two mm -hmm. halves make a whole. So we have to give equal side. We have to do the external equally as we do the internal. The men, the, the, the men, uh, with the air and the fire, they're more into logic and reason, you mm -hmm. know, as to what to do with their passions or their power. That's the air and the fire, you see. And um, I say father spirit, father spirit and the son of power, you know. So um, they're more in tune uh, with the spiritual aspect. That's why when we're talking about religion, mm -hmm. you know, that is more the father's domain, you see. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. Dealing with the father and the son, you see, mm. father spirit and the son of power. It's nothing r wrong with that half. It just has, it's just not, it's not whole. If it's not whole, it's not real. Anytime mm. you're looking at a part of the whole, that's the illusion. Mm. So once you completed that half is when you have to activate the opposite half in response to that in order to get the whole. But the air and fire, um, is like the external uh, spiritual platform, you know, that then, you know, can open us up in equal measure to the opposite earth and water uh, component. Uh, but um, the father, uh, the air and the sun, the, the masculine half, um, they deal more, like I said, with the spirit and they deal with the, uh, the power, spirit Indeed. and the power and mama, the magic. Uh, the, the feminine is the magic. See, most men, men are like on the front line. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're on the front line. They're up front. They're the external. They're the visible, the conscious, mm -hmm. where the feminine is the subconscious, internal, uh, the home, you know, at home. So we can, we can afford to tap into mama's magic. But the men on front line, <laughs> they don't have the luxury of, of yeah. trying to rely on magic, you mm. know, when they're on mm. the front line of the battlefield, you see. Mm. Mm. So they're more, they're the fire in the air. They're the ones out there, you know, doing the, uh, you know, the, the heavy work, the hard work, you know, and, and then having the mental agility to understand, you know, um, how to hit their next, you know, target where the women at home, we're the ones that can sit back and tap into and open up the magic of mama universe. So, you know, that's just the, the divine order. Uh, Indeed. No, no, definitely. Know, Indeed. It, it work together that way. Uh, we're going to take about five more questions, family, then we're going to get out of here. So give me, give me some more questions, family. I'm going to take five more. I see one here. How, how do you use the Bible in accordance with the decks? Now, whoever did that was pulling that out of my head because <laughs> I had intended to mention that and then, you know, got a little sidetracked because when we were talking about um, me having Christian clients, mm. I use the Bible all the time mm. in my um, wow. consultations. I use it all the time. What they did was they took the, the juice out of the Bible, mm. you know, and they literalized it. You see, yeah. So you have to put the symbolism back in it. And you'll understand it much more when you put the symbolism uh, back in it. That's the juice. As a matter of fact, they say uh, Bible in Arabic means the book of the stars. You see? Yeah, I heard that. Oh, yeah. And what they've done is, um, you know, taking the um, the juice out so that we look at it literally. There's, there's never going to be a, a, a physical, one physical aspect that's going to help you be able to tap into this collective spiritual um, messages, you see. Um, you're not going to be able to, like you said, you don't blend energy. You're not going to be able to compute one from the other. So um, uh, when you, um, I find the symbolism in the Bible um, is where, you know, that's the juice that they took out of the Bible, but I use it all the time. Uh, they talked about, um, I think it's Ezekiel uh, chapter one, 
uh, where they talk about uh, a cherubim with four faces. And it has uh, one cherubim, cherub has the face of a lion. And then the other one has the face of a man. And one has the face of the ox or the bull. And the other has the face of the eagle. And what they described in the Bible with that cherubim was the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Mm. Leo, the lion, opposite Aquarius, the man, and then Taurus, the bull, or the ox, and then Scorpio, the eagle. Those are the four fixed signs of the zodiac. I call them the uh, cross of crucifixion uh, because they're the ones that does the heavy work. You have three crosses that you work from, three cross levels. You have the um, cardinal cross. That's Aries opposite Libra, Cancer opposite Capricorn. Those are the ones that will activate and initiate a new level of royal vibration, step ups up to the higher royal levels of vibrations of the universe. And once the cardinal signs activates this new level, then the fixed cross is what sets it into motion. It's the one that reverses the energy. It's the uh, workhorse of the zodiac, the army are the enforcers, which I said is Aquarius, the evolution, uh, Leo of the New Age rulers, um, and then the horizontal cross of the fixed cross, Scorpio, transformation, and Taurus, values. So in order, in order to evolve Aquarius as the New Age rulers, Leo, there has to be a transformation, Scorpio, of our values, Taurus. So that is what that uh, cross represents. And then we go to the mutable cross, um, which is um, Gemini opposite Sagittarius and Virgo opposite Pisces. So where the cardinal cross activates and initiates, the fixed cross will set into motion. And then the mutable cross will adapt this new level of rotation of energy to a whole new reality in the universe. Mm. So those are the three cross levels that we're under the influence of, but the main one is that fixed cross. And that's the one they describe in the Bible, uh, Ezekiel chapter one, where they talk about the cherubim with those four faces. That's what they were indicating. Man, if I was a Christian, man, I'll be, I'll be running to you for a reading, man. The way you broke that down. Shit, the way you broke that down. Christian, you hear this? This is the point. Let's get to the next question. Um, okay. What is Sister Myra's take on light codes and light language? Mm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not that familiar with that. I remember I've heard, um, let me see, I've heard information on that, but I've never really gotten or indulged in, you know, specifically looking at those things, light codes and light and light language. No, I'm, you know, I'm not even, um, familiar with the details of what to even say about that let's see. okay let's get to the next question how can you tell when you've encountered a trickster spirit when reading tarot huh hmm, hmm, hmm. is there such thing not i mean i've never you know I, i've never uh had any um uh, in an interaction with that, a trickster spirit, because it's all about in, 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 you know, my interpretation as far as how the cards line up. And I also get feedback from the, the client. Like I always ask them after the third card is anything I've said resonated with you and most more likely, you know, something has. And as they go on to explain how those first three cards resonate with them, then it gives me a better understanding of how to put the other cards in context to that, as well as I'm always asking for feedback. You know, like when you say, uh, when I see you getting ready to ask a question, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what, what? Because that's I, how I'm listening to my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when I'm reading the information and if I hear a uh or a wow, or, you know, just anything, um, then I know I've tapped something. I've, 
I've hit some kind of, we're trying to hit the subconscious buttons. Mm, we're trying yeah. to hit the buttons that are hidden, that are internal. And when I hit that, I'll get a response. And once I get a response, then we'll feed off of that. You I know? get it. Okay. So I don't I usually, you know, come up across, um, you know, anything that would represent a trickster spirit in that. But then too, um, I, 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 like I said, I'm hammer time. <laughs> I know my power. Yeah. I know the source of my power. And I've been from, from day one, I've always put out protection for myself, for my loved ones. Um, and my loved ones includes my clients, you know, my family. So mm -hmm. I, I, feel I'm protected from that sort of thing. I think, yeah. you know, remember, we're talking levels. Yeah. And I'm at a level where I don't think a trickster spirit can access that level. I've had um, countless readers that has tried to read me and they can't do it because they have to be at a certain level to tap wow. into the energy. So I don't have much problems with trickster spirit because I don't think they can reach the level of where I'm vibrating at. See, the higher you vibrate, the faster the vibration. You know, um, uh, the, the the lower, the slower, um, you know, like your table vibrates, you know, but it's the more slow it is, the more solid it is. Um, and it's just hard. You and, and also, if you remember in the movie, The Matrix, you remember in the Nebuchadnezzar, that whenever it was sitting still, you know, it was when it was vulnerable for those attacks and all they had to push right. was that little button, that vibrant button that, that, that opened up their vibration and it would repel, you know, um, those that were trying to attack them. So I think that's the type of vessel I have. It's at a vibration at a level that um, uh, I don't think a trister spirit can access. Mm -hmm. That's just how I think and feel about it. Let's get to the next question. Uma Taro and things wants to know, any thoughts on why the swords resonate as fire for me and the wands as ear? Hmm. That's that's a, a very profound question. Um, there's something uh, reversal about you. There's something um, opposite about who you are in this reality. Like I said, we're spiritual beings having a physical experience and uh, you may have come in here um, just to serve a spiritual purpose, you know, not so much um, this is your level of reality. So you're bringing in an opposite vibration. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing I can think because you're talking opposite. You're talking uh, the raw, the fire versus the air. Now, when we're talking elemental uh, figures, we're talking uh, father and son. Ah, you know what? This is going to sound crazy, but when, you know, my son transitioned, you know, mother and son uh, physically. But when he transitioned, uh, they said he became the father uh, and I became the daughter in wow. that combination because he went into spirit, mm -hmm. father spirit. You see, the spirit is the father component. So as he went into spirit from the son to the father, that means he, um, um, you know, he um, transitioned, he, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, um, in other words, as he made his transition from the physical son to the spiritual father, the spirit is the father and the spiritual man is the father and the physical man is the son. So he transitioned from the, a physical man as the son into the spiritual man as the father, which automatically uh, brought me into as the daughter, you know, uh, and as Capricorn, I would be the daughter anyway. Uh, but now I'm no longer his personal mama, but in his position now as father spirit, I become the daughter. So, I mean, they revealed this to me. I didn't know what it was about when they brought this up to me. Uh, he became the father and I became the daughter. So I think it, it may have something to do with that uh, resonating as fire, um, you know, reversing those uh, polarities. Um, you may have come in, I don't know, in an opposite um, uh, energy, 
you know, for the sake of whatever a mission or purpose you're you're here to do. Um, but um, you, there always has to be a dual balance of opposite in order to create the whole. So that may be part of the duality of a balance that you have to make um, in order to fulfill or complete a mission or a purpose. But um, that is um, the balance of opposites. And that's doing a dual balance of opposites, which is another, which is what creates a, 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 a holistic, um, that energize um, holistically. So I can't be too specific about why you chose that, um, you know, that task to come in and serve, but um, you're bringing uh, some components together and a dual balance of opposites, um, you know, where they're switching up, you know, so you're playing both roles in, in all levels. You may be playing um, the sun um, for a particular reason, but then you can also transition into the father for the reason that you have to take that role, you know, so being very ambidextrous when it comes to your energy. Okay. Do you sprinkle a circle of pink salt around you before doing a reading? Sprinkle three times counterclockwise. Well, no, my spirit hasn't told me to do that. You know, if it had, you know, I would. But that's that's what I mean about getting, you know, in touch with your own spirit. It's the one that gives you the instructions on what is going to work best for you. So if your spirit gave you that, mm -hmm. then that is what, you know, is going to be your best uh, means of protection. You know, uh, if you're doing uh, readings that way, if your spirit has told you to do that. Like I said, only your spirit uh, can give you uh, the personal guidance because we're all on a unique journey. And only your spirit, that's what you have to look at. You're, the best rituals are the ones you uh, create yourself. Yes. Yes. You know, how your spirit is giving you, you know, uh, the information as to how uh, you need to do that ritual to best serve the purpose you're trying to serve. You know, uh, like if um, my altar, you know, you have to have the four elements on your altar. You know, I could go outside. I can think of a ritual I want to do. I could go outside and a rock, you know, can call up to me. This Whatever rock catches my eye is the rock that, spirit is identifying that it wants me to use or what particular incense, you know, as the air element, you know, just look at the name of the incense and your spirit will pull your coattail. That's the one you need to use, uh, depending on the purpose, you know, of the ritual that you're trying to, um, to do. So it had, your spirit had a reason, you know, for, um, using the pink salt, um, you know, as your circle. Uh, and that is why it gave that to you. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, anybody else who can identify with using that, you know, or, uh, can use it. Uh, but mm -hmm. your spirit is going to be the one to tell you, you know, exactly uh, what to use for what purposes. So. All right. I definitely appreciate y'all asking these questions. I mean, this is just something that, you know, we've, uh, like, a lot of people feel as though it's evil. So it's good to just have an open conversation about mm -hmm. the cards and the decks. I really love uh, this type of discussion. Let's get to one more question. This is from KB. I appreciate the Super Chat donation, KB. She wants to know, after being drawn to tarot for about three years, I asked Spirit if I should read tarot collectively, and I got the Three of Swords. How should I interpret? Hmm. At, for three years and the three of swords. Swords mm -hmm. um, is air element and air dissects, cuts. So it, the three of swords would tell me that after three years of using the tarot, it's time to cut that off. That's how I would interpret it. Because the air is the uh, air element does mean to dissect. See, um, you dissect pieces of information for understanding. That's the air element, you know. Um, so anytime you're dealing with the air, you're dealing with the dice, uh, dissecting or cutting off. So, uh, and then that three corresponds with the three years that you've done the uh, tarot readings. And then, you know, to put it with the three of swords, which is air element. Uh, to me would say after three years, 
my spirit is telling me to cut off using the Torah. Mm. That's how I would. Mm -hmm. Let's sneak one more question in here before we get out of here. Oh man, I just seen one. Um, give me one second. Where did that question go? Uh, let's ask this one then, because I don't see that one. Somebody asked, how do you know if you're getting a reading from a legitimate person or not? I don't, I don't see the question, but I've seen somebody ask that. Okay. Um, how do you know if you're getting a reading from, um, <laughs> you, you guys, you know, um, I know I'm going to be sounding redundant here, but that's your spirit should let you know that your spirit is the one that's going to have to identify that to you. You know, your spirit is the one that needs to, you know, pull your coattail and say, and I mean, you may get into the reading and things just ain't, just, just does not seem to be sitting right. You know, it just doesn't mm -hmm. seem, um, you know, it's like, um, you know, don't do like the guy did me. Um, and he was a Gemini, so he cut me off the minute that <laughs> <laughs> air. So he cut me off the minute he felt I wasn't. Uh, using my psychic abilities like he was used to getting, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that was his way method of defining, uh, uh, and uh, and I just may not have been the right person for him, you see. So, um, but that's where you have to depend on your spirit to let you know, and it'll give you the funny feeling, you know. Right now, we're we're about to look straight into people's spirits. Now, you know, the physicality is about to take a back seat to spirituality. Mm. That means we are going to start looking straight into people's spirits now, you mm. know, uh, and if it feels good, then the spirit is good. If it don't feel good, then it's not good, you see, uh, and just trust that, you see. Mm. So if your spirit is not saying, uh, ugh, you know, if your spirit is not making you feel like uh, something's wrong, then I would go with it. But. You know, if your spirit is, is, if it's just getting an uneasy feeling, if it just doesn't feel right, if it just, you know, um, um, doesn't sit right, then, you know, then that just may be how your spirit is telling you um, this person isn't going to work for you. Because that's what I told the guy, the Gemini guy, I said, look, you know, um, you just need to find someone who's going to read it in the way that you, you know, expect it to be read. But that's not me, you see. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, we all have a unique purpose and a unique journey that we're on. And like I said, only your spirit can be the one to give you the guidance and pull your coattail. Uh, we're all on a unique journey. What may work for you may not work for others and uh, what worked for others may not work for you. Uh, and I, like I said the last time, don't take any uh, one message of anybody. Maybe take the information and take of that information what works for you and leave out the rest you see because mm -hmm. that's what we're supposed to be doing anyway i'm going to take some from over here leave that out take some from over here mm -hmm. leave that out take mm -hmm. some from over here leave that out so we bring everything together for our own internal truth you right. know and and path but um only your spirit um is the one that can give you personal guidance so um, you know, that's who you have to rely on. Uh, and now I tell people it's not enough just to know. Uh, now you have to walk in the knowing. Okay, it's the no. difference in knowing and walking in the knowing. And when you walk, and so I always give this analogy to that. I say, suppose your spirit comes and tells you that somebody's going to come and plummet you in the face. And um, but they say, don't worry. They're not going to be able to touch a hair on your head. They're not going to be able to get a fraction of an inch within your face. So mm. indeed, someone comes and starts to plummet you in your face. What are you going to do at that moment? Most of us are going to duck. We're going to fight back or we're going to run. But it's not until we stand there can we prove that the power of the spirit is more real than the physical illusion that's hitting you in the face. It's not until you stand there can you prove they're not going to be able to touch a hair on your head. 
or get a fraction of an inch within your face. That is when you're walking in the knowing versus knowing. You see. So, like I said, hammer time, you know, that means you have to be trust, you know, that what your spirit is giving you, um, you know, that is given to you in your best interest. And when it veers you away from something, you know, your spirit is in full control right now. You've done your half. Now you just learn, need to how, learn how to trust your spiritual half as it brings that to the table. Uh, and it's not trying to teach you to know. It's trying to teach you to trust it because it goes beyond what you know. So it's trying to get you to trust it, um, you know, uh, and not figure it out, not know, but learn how to trust how your spirit is giving you guidance because there's coming a time very soon when spirit says move and we're not gonna have the luxury of second guessing it. So right now we're in training uh, to learn our spiritual language and guidance so that we begin to trust our spirit. And um, when it tells us to move, you know, we won't even second guess it. We won't think twice about it. We'll make that move, you know, uh, like our spirit has trained us in its trust in guiding us to do, you know, but it goes beyond yeah. what we can know because it looks around corners we can't, it has a broader view. So it's about trusting it, not trying to figure it out or understand it you see indeed man i i appreciate you for coming on the show once again sister always, Myra. always, always. dropping it uh <laughs> schooling us to the whole tarot cards uh getting people comfortable and acquainted with it yes um yeah definitely appreciate it i want you to give the people your contact info if ever i see them talking about how to get in contact with you do you have a youtube channel all that stuff tell the people how they can reach out to you Okay, I, I, I've actually gotten off that uh, the social media. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I really am not too much on there. Uh, like I said, um, through the um, the website, which is uh, you know Sister Myra, uh, that's it, SisterMyra.com. Um, that's the best way uh, to make contact. And uh, through my um, uh, text message, but. I don't want you texting me uh, for a consultation. I'm not, I don't have any available consultations, you know, through the text message. But if you have a question, you know, um, you get, uh, you have access to me best through the text message, not phone calls, you know, not um, voicemails. I don't, you know, those, you, you know, if you leave me a voicemail, you might not hear back from me because, mm. You know, I don't really deal with the voicemails that much, but I do very responsive to the text message. It may take me a minute because I get a lot, but, you know, my phone number, the the 336-965-0180, but use it to text a question, you know, not to request a consultation because I don't have any of those available anymore. And the only way you can do a consultation is through my website, which is the sistermyra.com. But like I said, we're all the way out to April of next year. April. <laughs> Look, the sister is booked to April, y'all. Wow. I'm booked up till April. That, and they're still good. booking, you yeah. know. Uh, and I told you all the countries that yeah. it's coming in from. It's just I'm I'm flabbergasted, brother Rich. <laughs> that is beautiful. So April, you have really wow. put me out there, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that is. This is the time we're in. You're you're so necessary for right now. Like I told you that months ago. You're so necessary for right now. Like, woo, we yeah. need this right now. So, family, yeah. uh, what's you said? The website is say that website one more time. Uh, uh, Sister Myra. Sister Myra, okay. Mm -hmm. Sister yeah. with a R, Sister. Yes, yeah, Sister with a Myra and the H at the end okay. uh, of Myra as well. So oh, and they Myra. they say the number, the number again. Oh, area code three three six nine six five zero one eight zero. Okay, let me just put it. So the uh, hold up. So it's three three six nine six five zero one eight zero. Yes. Okay, That's great, it. great, mm -hmm. great. Uh, yes. I want to give I want to give a shout out to King Simon in the chat. I seen the brother King Simon. He's dope uh, with numerology. Yes, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah so he, he's dope with numerology. Yes, yes, um, yes. 
any other form of contact information? You know what they asked too earlier? I, I, I didn't want to cut you off earlier. They kept asking, do you have classes? Do you offer any type of classes? A lot of people asked that earlier. A lot of people. Oh, my gosh. Man, I did they, have classes, but I, I mean, they're closed right now because um, I take three clients, and it's a nine-week course, and I take three client, you know, three students for every nine week course. And I uh, was filled up at the time. Um, so that's why it's closed for now, but that's on the website as well. So I would say check back in about, in about two to three months to see if it, uh, I've opened it back up again. So, but I was contemplating, you know, kind of, I'm thinking about shutting it down because I got so much you know, other things going on, yeah. but I keep getting the requests. Like you said, they keep asking for the class and I do have one already. Um, so just check back with me uh, on the website in about two to three months to see if the, the, um, the classes is open back up again. Indeed. Thank you once again, family, brother, rich sister, Myra, the Oracle. Um, we're getting out of here. Thank you, queen. I look forward to having on, on you on next time. Um, yes. I already got something in mind. I'll let you know that at a later yes. date, but I already got something in mind. So okay. Real good. But um, thanks for coming on once again. Thanks everybody for watching. We sign out, brother, right. sister, Myra. Peace, family. Mm -hmm.